First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Hello, how are things going? Not bad, but... What's the trouble? I'm worried about my trip. Could you give me some suggestions? Of course. I will arrive at London Heathrow Airport and then go to Cambridge. How about taking a taxi? It is the quickest and most comfortable way. Sure, I know, but it's too expensive. Right. What do you think of the underground? Darling, there is no underground to your destination from London, OK? OK. Why don't you rent a private car? Is it very expensive? The cost depends on the type of car. Maybe it's a good choice. Oh, do I need my driving licence? Of course. Don't you have a licence? Mm, I lost my driving licence the day before yesterday. I am so sorry. And I do not really want to drive myself after a long flight. Well, how about taking a coach from the airport? A coach? Yes. Do you know how much that costs? Usually the minimum fare is about £14. Single or return? Of course, it is a one-way ticket. And that's quite cheap. Yes. How about the number of passengers in the coach? Let me see. It is around 20 to 30. How long would it take to get to Cambridge by coach? I think it's about three hours. Really? That's too slow. Why does it need such a long time? Hmm, because it has many stops during the route. Oh, no. And the last choice is the airport shuttle. Yes, tell me some more information about it. Now, look at questions 5 to 10. Good morning. This is the Transport Information at London Heathrow Airport. How can I help you? Good morning. I'd like to reserve a seat on the airport shuttle. OK, I just have to fill out this form for you. Uh, what's your name? My name is Echo Gray. And your age? I'm 21 years old. What is your nationality? I come from New York. OK, American. Yes. And your flight number? It's BA188. Do you know the arrival time? It is five past three in the afternoon. Sure. Which terminal? It is... let me think. Is it Terminal 5? Oh, yes. So that's the Heathrow Airport to Cambridge on the 26th of August? Yes. Single ticket or return? Just single. Does that have some discount? I mean, some special tickets. There will be a super save ticket after four o'clock in the afternoon on the 26th of August. So what's the departure time? 16.10. How much is the fare? A single ticket of super save is £18 and includes coffee. The last thing, how will you pay your shuttle fare? Do you accept American Express? Of course. Please tell me your number. It is 3339-5183-7799-6047. OK. Thank you for choosing Heathrow Airport Shuttle. This is the end of Section 1. Turn to Section 2. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 20. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, come in, please. How can I help you? 
I want to know some information about your health centre. Yes, sit down, please. There are two health centres. One is East Centre and the other is West Centre. Where are they located? East Centre is about 10 minutes to City Hall. Very close and West Centre is out of town. How about the appointment system of the two health centres? But because East Centre has many patients, I have to say its appointment system is not bad. How about the West Centre? It is more efficient than the East Centre, just 48 hours drive in advance. Fine. How about their facilities? What do you mean? How about the difference of medical facilities between the two centres? The East Centre has modern facilities, especially for some patients who need an operation. Yes. How about the facilities at the West Centre? It also has a standard facilities, but it's not better than the East Centre. Yes. I'd like to know some information about the doctors in both the health centres. There are about 12 doctors at East Centre. I heard somebody say there is a really nice doctor who is good with children. Yes, uh, he is Dr. Sam. I'm worried about my son's leg. How old is your son? Seven years old. Oh, I think the West Centre is a good choice for you. What do you mean? There are eight doctors at the West Centre. Dr. Jerry is one of the most famous doctors in both health centres. Yes, it is said that Dr. Jerry is a very good with leg trouble. Yes, I will think about it. If you want a doctor to visit you at home, you can reserve a home visit. Really? Yes, but we have a fixed home visit time. Consulting hour for doctors at the East Centre is from 9 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And the West Centre? The time is from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. How about the charge? You mean in an emergency? Yes. If you are a member, we will charge you £8 at the East Centre. Is it the same fee with the West Centre? No, because of the distance, the charge will be £9.50. Sure. How about medication? When the doctor sees you, you will get a prescription. You can take the medication you need at our health centre or go to a drugstore. Sure. If it's for a child under the age of 10, you don't have to pay for medication. Really? That sounds good. The same thing applies if you are a patient who is retired or pregnant. Right. This is the end of section two. Turn to section three. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Thanks, Caitlin. Well, welcome to our university. There are three parts of the orientation during the next week. The first part is the campus tour. Now, please look at the schedule. On next Monday, we will begin our tour with an introduction to the student union. So please gather at the door of the student union at nine o'clock. After visiting the building first, we will help all students to apply for the Student Union card. So please take one passport photo when you attend the orientation. Usually there are some departments such as a travel agency, insurance and so on. You can enjoy your lunch in campus, perhaps at the canteen. At two o'clock in the afternoon, we will all visit the library. A lecturer at the library will give you an introduction. How to apply for a library card, how to borrow reference books, and how to use the facilities in the library. As you know, you will spend lots of time in the library for your future studies. So the introduction is very important for you. On Tuesday, we will visit the computer center. All students can get a username and a passport. You can also register your laptop in the center if you have it. There are some rules of the computer center, especially regarding the use of the printer and the photocopier. 
After lunch, the next station is the Sports Centre. I am sure you will all be very excited about our facilities. There are also many different societies. You can join in any of them according to your interests and apply for a membership. Now look at questions 25 to 30. The second part of orientation is course arrangements. You should gather in the auditorium of the West Campus in the morning of Wednesday. The course coordinator or office staff of your facility will introduce you to the course requirements. First, you will get some information and requirements about compulsory courses and then optional courses. The faculty often gives students some handouts of course introduction and the different assessments of each subject. Students usually get one or two days to make a decision of optional courses. Of course, I know nearly all students will focus on the assessment. As usual, we have four assessments. Attendance is still the first one. We expect at least 80% attendance and students cannot choose the time. And then all students have to write an assignment such as an essay. Your personal tutor will give you help for the topic choice, structure, data collecting and time arrangement. So don't be worried. As a student of the business faculty, all students have to do a presentation, especially group presentations, in which you can train and improve the team spirit. The last assessment is the exam. I know you will all hate it, but you have to attend some exams. Most exams are open book. Isn't it a busy day on Wednesday? You will have a free morning on Tuesday. We hope all students can come to department offices to get a curriculum and hand in your optional course form in the afternoon. The last part of orientation is a party for all new students. The party will be held at 5 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. There is a common room on the third floor in the business faculty building. We will prepare for many delicious foods and drink in there and it will be a good chance to know your advisors and classmates. This is the end of section 3. Turn to section 4. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Today we have invited a famous scientist to give us an introduction of the latest survey called The Census of Marine Life. Let's welcome Alok Jha. Thanks, Ella. The Census of Marine Life has been the biggest and most comprehensive attempt ever to answer that question. The Census of Marine Life, which hopes to indicate a baseline of marine life, estimates that there are more than 230,000 species in the sea. The study covers from coast to the open ocean, from the shallows to the deeps, from little things like microbes to large things such as fish and whales. A team of over 360 scientists from all over the world have spent the past 10 years surveying 25 regions, from the Antarctic, through to the temperate and tropical seas to the Arctic to count the different types of plants and animals. The findings indicate that crustaceans such as lobsters, crabs, krill and barnacles account for a fifth of the number of species in the world's oceans and half of the world's marine species is mollusk, squid and octopus, and fish including sharks.
The charismatic species usually used in propagating environmental protection, for example, whales, sea lions, turtles, and seabirds, account for less than 2% of the species in the world's oceans. The study has also focused on major fields of concern for conservationists. In every region, they got the same experience of a major collapse of what were usually very abundant fish stocks or crabs or crustaceans that are now only 5 to 10% of what they used to be. The main reasons include overfishing, degraded habitats, and pollution. But more problems are presented. Rising water temperatures and acidification brought by climate change and the growth in areas of the ocean that are low in oxygen and therefore unable to support marine life. The census of marine life shows that enclosed seas such as the Mediterranean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, China's shells, the Baltic and the Caribbean have the most threatened biodiversity. The pollutions in enclosed seas are mainly from chemicals or garbage that people throw into it. Dense coastal populations of humans also tend to be packed along enclosed seas, meaning rising contaminations and extraction of more biodiversity from the water. The Mediterranean Sea, which contains around 17,000 identified species, has been a region with high threat. Scientists in our team studying the Mediterranean identified problems related to increased litter from shipping and munitions across the sea, as well as bombs discharged during the Kosovo War. The Mediterranean also has to face problems with invasive species, displacing the creatures that already live there. The Census of Marine Life shows that the Mediterranean Sea has the most alien species, more than 600, among all the 25 regions that have been surveyed. It looks like the region with coral reefs has always had a very high rate of speciation. It also has a very diverse range of habitats, from the deepest regions of the ocean to large reasons of shallow seas which can afford coral reefs. The most diverse regions identified by the Census of Marine Life are around Australian and Japanese waters, which contain more than 30,000 species each, and are among the most biologically diverse in the world. Next in line are the oceans of China, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. Besides algae and the seabirds and mammals that travel around the sea, viperfish has been regarded as the most cosmopolitan marine creature by the Census of Marine Life. Its presence was recorded in around a quarter of the world's seas. And for every marine species of all kinds known to science, scientists of the Census of Marine Life estimate that at least four have yet to be discovered. For example, about 70% of species of fish have been discovered, but for most other groups, likely less than one third are known. Our research team has found the number of marine fish species was about 16,764 and was growing at around 100 a year. So scientists estimate that there are almost 22,000 fish species in the world's oceans. The most fruitful potential areas for discovery include the tropics, deep seas, and southern hemisphere. Although most ocean organisms still remain nameless and their numbers unknown at the end of the census of marine life, we still gained an important and exciting start. This is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. This is the end of the listening text. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.